target. Gage, we're going to introduce you. All right, can you all hear me over the jet? Awesome, welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. How great is it to have the Crew 2 crew here for the third launch of humans to space in less than a year. I mean, what an exciting time for our nation's human spaceflight program. Put these guys in that uh, Crew Dragon on a Falcon 9. And this is really cool. The Crew Dragon that they are flying on is the same one that flew Bob and Doug. So Megan gets to fly on the same vehicle that Bob flew on last May. And, uh, and this rocket that they're riding on, the Falcon 9, it's the same Falcon 9 that took the Crew 1 to orbit that we're going to bring home here at the end of the month. So just absolutely an amazing time. Guys, it's great to have you here. It must be getting real, huh? Getting ready to launch. All right, with that, it's my pleasure to introduce our acting administrator, Steve Jerzyk. Steve? Hey, thank you. Thank you, Bob. And um, first, I want to welcome our astronauts, Shane, Megan, Aki, and Toma. Uh, I know they're ready because they told us they were ready at last at yesterday's flight readiness review. So welcome, guys, gals. Um, and yeah, we're going to do the third crew launch to the ISS this year, um, Thursday, April 22nd, next Thursday, uh, with uh, on NASA and SpaceX's Crew Dragon Falcon 9. Uh, I've been with NASA a long time. They, they always put this in my remarks to remind me I've, I'm old, but I've been with NASA 32 years, um, and it's been an amazing, amazing career. And um, and I'm never, I'm, it always ceases, um, never ceases to amaze me the talent, dedication, and bravery of our astronauts and our foreign partner astronauts. So thank you guys for what you do for NASA and the nation and, and the world. Um, I want to thank Bob Cabana and his team um, at KSC for all the work they're doing. Uh, on the ground to prepare for next week's launch. I also want to thank Mark Geyer and the team at Johnson Space Center and Jody Singer, the team at Marshall Space Flight Center, for their hard work in getting to certification, flight certification for the Crew-2 crew launch. A lot of hard work. And of course, I want to thank SpaceX and the SpaceX team. Uh, they have been incredible partners for enabling NASA's mi uh, vision for commercial space flight. And, um, and very importantly, getting astronauts to and from the ISS um, safely and effectively. Um, crew 2, again, marks the third crewed commercial space flight mission to the ISS. Um, but there's a whole lot of firsts with this mission, some of which Bob has already mentioned. Um, for Crew Dragon and Falcon 9 for this mission, uh, like Bob mentioned, Crew Dragon Endeavor flew on the historic Demo 2 mission. Um, less than a year ago today. And the Falcon 9 um, flew the Crew-1 astronauts to ISS this past November. So reuse was really important. And um, it was a challenge for the NASA SpaceX team to certify both the spacecraft and the launch vehicle for, for flight for this mission. But they were more than up to the challenge. And we had a very successful um, flight readiness review yesterday. It's the first commercial mission flying two of our international partners to the station and returning them home. It's the first commercial crew handover on the ISS, and it's the first time two commercial crew spacecraft will be docked to the station. So just an <laughs> incredibly exciting uh, mission. Um, and it's uh, a, just a coincidence that the, the day of launch for Crew 2 is on Earth Day, and it reminds us that of NASA's core mission to study the Earth uh, and conduct Earth science research uh, using remote sensing satellites. So NASA is sent this work is essential um, for the nation and the world in dealing with climate change. And we're, we not only, we, we also collaborate internationally on just about all our science missions, including our Earth science missions. So it's, it's a, not only an effort in the U.S., but across the globe. 
Um, we, uh, we use the unique vantage point of space um, to study the Earth from the oceans to the atmospheres and really try to study and model the Earth as a system and try to induce uh, and try to uh, determine uh, how, how the planet is uh, evolving, uh, including climate change. And uh, then ISS plays a unique role because of the orbit that it's in. Most of our Earth orbiting satellites are down looking and are, are in an orbit over the poles. Uh, and we can image the Earth and oceans as the Earth rotates under the satellite. Uh, ISS is in an inclined orbit. So for some uh, remote sensing uh, instruments and, and observations that ISS provides a unique platform um, to get those measurements and to do earth science research. So it's, a, it's becoming more and more a part of the ISS mission. And of course, commercial crews enabling an asset to have crew members on the International Space Station, uh, not only to maintain and do those earth observations, but also do the critical research and technology development for our commercial partners and, um, and to enable our Artemis missions, our uh, crewed missions to the moon, and eventually our, uh, our human mission to Mars. Uh, so I'm proud today to be joined by representatives from JAXA and ESA, two agencies that have contributed to much of our exploration of space. Um, so I want a thank you to uh, Junichi Sakai, manager of the ISS program at JAXA, and Frank Davina, manager of the ISS program at ESA. And now I'd like to hand it over to Frank. Thank you very much, uh, Steve. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to start uh, by uh, saying that, uh, of course, ESA is uh, very happy and very grateful that we can hear, stay here and see that uh, Thomas will be our first uh, ESA astronaut to fly on the uh, U.S. commercial crew vehicle. I would like to thank uh, all the partners that made this possible, uh, NASA, of course, but also SpaceX and uh, all the other partners from the International Space Station. Uh, because this is, of course, uh, only possible when we all continue to work uh, together. Uh, it's a number of firsts. Uh, as uh, Steve mentioned, it's also the first for us, uh, of course, to fly an ESA astronaut on a, on a Crew Dragon vehicle. Uh, our team has uh, worked alongside the uh, NASA teams and the SpaceX teams to make sure that we can do this in all safety. And as uh, Steve mentioned yesterday, we had a very successful FRR, so we are uh, ready to fly and we are ready to go. Uh, it's also important for us that uh, we see that uh, with uh, the commercial crew, we will now have four USOS astronauts on orbit, uh, not only with uh, this flight. It started, of course, with uh, Crew 1, but Crew 2, and also with the coming flights that uh, will come up, because that significantly increases the time for utilization uh, in the European, uh, in the uh, ISS. And, of course, uh, utilization is for ESA, uh, one of the main drivers why we fly and why we participate in the uh, International Space Station. So thanks to uh, all these crew members now, and we will not only have four, we will have five, uh, because uh, we launched uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, also on the Soyuz, we will have five USOS crew members, so we will have plenty of time to do, uh, to do science on, on board of the space station. Uh, last but not least, uh, this is a flight in a number of series. Uh, Thomas will be the first one, but Matthias Maurer will fly already in uh, fall this year, and after Matthias we will have Samantha flying as well. So for the first time, uh, three flights in a row for a year and a half, we will have European astronauts on board of the, the International Space Station. So that also shows that ESA is growing and is continuing to invest more in exploration and in uh, human spaceflight, which is uh, great alongside with our uh, other partners. We will also see the MLM launch during this, uh, this flight with our Russian colleagues, and on board of that we will have the European robotic arm, uh, something that we have been looking very much forward for to, to have on orbit, and Toma will also be involved uh, in the uh, first checkouts of the European uh, robotic arm, uh, Toma, so great for that. And so last but not least, uh, at the end of the mission, Toma will be the commander to receive also Matthias, and, and that's for Europe is a big sign that we will have a European commander together with uh, two European astronauts on the International Space Station. So once again, folks, uh, congratulations. Uh, I see that you're ready. I see that you're happy to fly. Uh, I was there many years ago in your position uh, 
I would prefer to be in your position than standing here, to be, uh, to be very honest, but I know that Thomas never wants that, so uh, unfortunately. So uh, Godspeed, guys, uh, and uh, Megan, uh, all the best, and uh, see you on orbit. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to pass the word now to uh, Mr. Sakai from the, the ISS program manager from uh, JAXA. Thank you, Frank. Um, I've said uh, uh, this phrase uh, many times since last year, but uh, I'll repeat again. On behalf of JAXA, I would like to sincerely express our appreciation to NASA leadership, SpaceX, and all the colleagues who worked so hard for crew to launch operations, uh, launch preparation, and continuing ISS operation under such a uh, tough COVID-19 situation. It is a great honor for all the Japanese people, including me, the Japanese astronaut uh, board forefront uh, commercial spacecraft of Crew Dragon twice in a row with international, space, international partners. I do believe that uh, the close relationship and uh, partnership between, the, between international partners, uh, especially NASA, has brought the, uh, for the uh, space cooperation uh, for a long time. While the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic is being held on the ground, maybe. Now, I believe uh, Japanese astronaut Hoshide Akihiko Aki will lead Expedition 65 missions as a commander and succeed in the mission with Supreme NASA and ESA Korean astronaut. I'm looking forward to this coming launch and we'll continue our preparation for the uh, launch operations and uh, on, our, on our own. So I pray that you are safe uh, launch and return. And see you, see, see you six months later, guys. Come back to the site. Thank you for your attention. All right, now the real reason you're here. Uh, as the ladder was coming down, Frank and I were talking, and uh, Frank said, you know, when the plane lands at the launch site, that's when you realize it's getting real, and uh, it's certainly getting real for this crew, and it's my extreme pleasure to introduce to you the commander who's going to introduce the rest of his crew, Colonel Shane Kimbrough, Commander, Crew 2. Shane. Thank you, Colonel Cabana, and good afternoon. It is awesome being at Kennedy Space Center, um, especially on launch week, like Colonel Cabana was talking about. It's definitely getting real. Um, our crew is really well trained, extremely well trained um, from the NASA, the SpaceX, and the international partner teams. So we are really excited and ready to go. Um, I'm going to introduce to you uh, one of my crewmates, the only one of our crew that's wearing a Mach 26 patch, and that's our pilot, Megan MacArthur. Thanks, Shane. Uh, it's great to see everybody here. It's really great to be here. It's, we come in uh, on, the, on the plane over here, and we got to, to fly by the pad and see our rocket getting ready to go, and it's just an amazing feeling. I've gotten to do that before, and there really there's nothing like it when you look out the window and see a spaceship getting prepared and realize that uh, you're going to be riding on it in a few days. So it really is a wonderful feeling. Um, and I just want to take a moment to thank the, the people that get us here, that get us ready, and that get all of this ready to make it happen. It's a huge number of people, um, and I just really want to take every opportunity to, to say thank you because we know how much work it takes to get here, and uh, we really appreciate it. And that includes our families, of course, um, sacrificing along the way as we prepare. So just want to uh, take a moment to thank everyone. I also uh, want to introduce our next crewmate, a mission specialist for Crew Dragon and also mission commander for Increment 65, Aki Hoshide. Uh, thank you, Megan, and uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today, and it's a very exciting moment for us. Um, we know that a lot of effort came in uh, to prepare the capsule, the rocket, and preparing us in training. And uh, we all thank, for, thank everyone for that. 
and uh, it's an honor to be part of this team. Uh, looking forward to a great flight and a great mission. And uh, I'd like to continue in uh, Japanese. And you know, さんこんにちは、えー。今日高校ケネディ宇宙センターに来られて非常に、えー、嬉しく思います。えー、これまで、えー、クルードラゴンのカプセルロケット、そして我々を訓練して、えー、まあ準備してくれた多くの皆さんに、えー、感謝申し上げます。えー、打ち上げをそしてミッションを楽しみにしております。頑張ってきます。All right, with that,、um, I'm going to introduce、uh, the one and only、uh, Toma Pesque, mission specialist and ESA astronaut. Um, all right, so, like it's been said before,、um, every day there's a major milestone that's happening that's bringing us closer to flight, and it feels more real.、Um, but it doesn't just happen like this, it takes a lot of hard work, and、uh, NASA and the partners make it seem routine, but it's not. We know it's not. Uh, we know there's a lot of work that goes into it, so we'd like to thank all those people involved.、Uh, we take them in our hearts and we'll, we'll bring a, a bit of them、uh, together with us on the, on the space station.、Um, I want to say a few words in French as well,、uh, if you allow me.、Um, Today is the first day we're here at Cap Canaveral. We're ready, the equipment is ready, the vehicle is ready. I'd like to take a minute to thank all the people, whether it's here at the NASA, elsewhere. Uh, chez nous, en Europe, partout dans tous les pays membres de l'Agence spatiale européenne, au Japon, en Russie, qui ont travaillé sur ce programme et qui sont. Et c'est la somme de leur travail qui nous permet à nous d'aller dans l'espace, donc on les emmènera un peu avec nous.、Um, and because I'm speaking last, I don't get to introduce anybody, and I think that's unfair.、Um, so in, instead of introducing anybody, I'll,、uh, I'll ask you to notice Megan's shoes if you haven't done so yet, because、uh, they're pretty awesome. And there's talk of us all wearing the same shoes, but for some reason she was outvoted. But please enjoy the shoes. <laughs> Okay, hey, I'm Kyle Herring with NASA Public Affairs here at the Kennedy Space Center.、Um, we only have about 10 minutes with this crew.、Uh, based on the launch time, you guys can probably imagine they're going to be doing some pretty significant sleep shifting, and their bedtime, I think, is about 6 p.m., and they've got a bunch of stuff to do before that. So、um, if you don't mind, ask one question, and we'll see how many we can get through before I run out of time. And、uh, we'll start with you, Marcia. Go ahead. Marsha Dunn, Associated Press for Commander Kimbrough, probably.、Um, this still feels new, SpaceX crew flights. There's only been two. Do you see this as a test flight in part, at least for your crew? Do you feel like test pilots, and especially considering that the first time that reused rockets and capsules will be used for the astronauts? Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. To, thanks, Marsha. We're excited to fly in these flight proven vehicles、um, that you mentioned.、Um, You know, certainly, I think all of them until we get several years under our belt should be considered test flights、um, to answer your question. So, we're very confident in the team that got us ready, that, that are working on the vehicles. We don't have any issues with that.、Um, and we're ready to fly here in、like、about five and a half days, I think, now. So, thanks. Hi, I'm Tetsuro Soe from NHK, Japan Broadcasting Corporation. And this question is for Aki Hoshide. And let me, allow me to ask a question in Japanese. Uh, 新しい宇宙船、そして新しいあの、えー、あの宇宙船で,です、ねあの、また非常に多様なクルーを率いるコマンダーという立場になりますが、今回のフライト、どういう何を楽しみにされているでしょうか、それと予定通り行けばです、ね、オリンピックを宇宙から見ることになるかと思うんですけれども、それについて、あの今、どんなふうなお気持ちでいらっしゃるか、お知らせください。はい、ありがとうございます。えー、そうですね、あのーえーまあえー、多国籍のクルーを率いる形になりますけれども、あの皆さん、非常に訓練もしっかりされていて、あの経験豊富なクルーに恵まれたと思っています、なので、あのコマンダーとしてはです、ねえーまあ、しっかりチームをまとめて、地上のチームと一体となって、えー、スクラムを組んで,です、ねえー、ミッションに臨みたいというふうに思っております。それからオリンピック・パラリンピックの期間にあの軌道上にいるということなので、まあ、軌道上からすべてのアスリートに声援を送り、そしてまあ軌道上では軌道上でまあオリンピックをしたいというふうに思っております。Why do you repeat that? Do you mind repeat that in Japanese? In English? In English? Okay. Let's see. What was that? <laughs> so I'm,、uh, I'm very fortunate to have a, a very、uh, experienced crew members. On board the space station when I'm、uh, the commander of the、uh, increment 65.、Uh, and、uh, it's going to be a lot of fun.、Uh, we're going to have a great、uh, mission, I'm sure about that. 
And uh, in terms of uh, Olympics uh, and the Special Olympics, uh, we'll be up there during that time frame. So we'll enjoy and root for every single athlete that competes in that. And uh, we'll have our own Olympics on board. Thank you. Hi, Stephen Clark from Space Flight Now. My question is for Megan MacArthur. Uh, this will be your first trip to the International Space Station, your first flight in uh, over a decade, and a new type of rocket, a new type of spacecraft. Uh, what about all that excites you most, and what are you most looking forward to? Um, well, the, the whole thing, of course, is exciting. Getting to fly on a new vehicle, getting to uh, stay in space long duration is something obviously completely new for me. I think it's going to be like the difference between visiting a country for a business trip and, and then maybe moving there you know, longer term. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what those differences are. And I'm very lucky to have three very experienced crewmates, uh, actually probably five very experienced crewmates who are going to really be able to show me the ropes. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I, I just am really looking forward to the whole experience getting started. Thanks. Matt Trezza, Fox 35 News Orlando. We have an international crew here right now. The planet is dealing with a global pandemic. What's it been like preparing and training for this mission under these circumstances, under these conditions, and has it played into your training at all? Hey, thanks for the question. It's definitely played into our training, as you might imagine. Uh, it's really a testament to the training teams uh, at all the centers around the world that have adapted uh, and been able to train us uh, even just getting travel between the different countries has been a challenge, but it, uh, it's all worked out. And we've been very blessed to, to you know, I've been getting, spent a lot of time with these folks behind me, and we've gotten to be really, really good friends, which is only going to play out further um, on the space station. And that's really only because of the pandemic, so there's some silver linings, believe it or not, to it. Uh, and we saw that through our training. So the training didn't, you know, miss a beat, honestly. We had to make some adjustments, uh, but the teams did a fabulous job getting us ready to go. Hi, Irene Klotz with Aviation Week and Space Technology for Shane. Um, if plans hold, you're going to be on board uh, when SpaceX flies a private mission. Did you have any special training to accommodate not just one but four guests? And do you have any concerns about that many non-professional astronauts being on the station so early in the program? Thanks. Yeah, we didn't get any special training. Of course, we know that uh, Inspiration4 missions is really exciting, and it's going to come up hopefully in the fall. Um, if we're lucky, we'll get a chance to see it, but if not, then Crew 3 will get the pleasure of seeing them on board. Hello, uh, Loïc de la Marne. I'm a reporter from the French National TV. May I ask a question in French to, to, to Thomas for the European media? Uh, Thomas, est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner votre état d'esprit de partir de cet endroit uh, historique, symbolique, Cap Kennedy, j'imagine qu'enfant... Uh, comme beaucoup d'entre nous, vous y, avez, vous y avez rêvé, et puis de nous parler de cette nouvelle ère. Vous êtes le premier astronaute européen à partir dans un, dans un vaisseau privé. Qu'est-ce que ça représente, cette nouvelle ère, ce nouvel accès à l'espace privé pour tous les astronautes, et notamment les astronautes européens ouais, Je pense d'abord qu'effectivement, cet endroit, c'est un petit peu magique. Pour moi, je suis, je suis, ça fait un peu plus de dix ans que je suis astronaute, donc maintenant, même si je suis encore le plus jeune de, le, de l'ESA, mais ça ne va pas durer parce qu'on a une sélection qui arrive cette année, euh, je suis quand même un vétéran et pourtant je n'étais jamais vraiment venu ici et du coup je découvre un peu tout donc c'est quand même super, euh, super enthousiasmant pour moi après 10 ans de carrière de, de recommencer un petit peu à zéro et j'ai l'impression d'être comme un gamin et de, et de découvrir toutes les installations et les gens qui ont fait vivre euh, eh ben, le programme de la navette spatiale, les programmes qui l'ont précédé et puis qui ont qu on continué à, à maintenir la base pendant ces années où, où on n'avait plus de, de départ depuis ici. Euh, je pense que c'est important d'avoir plusieurs moyens d'accès à la station spatiale, ça c'est certain. Euh, parce, pourquoi Parce qu'on n'est jamais à l'abri d'un problème technique, c'est difficile d'envoyer des gens dans l'espace. Euh, on arrive à faire marcher ça quasiment tous les jours, mais c'est quand même un petit miracle. Euh, donc c'est important d'avoir une redondance et d'avoir, ben, si jamais ça devait se passer mal d'un côté, pour la route de l'Est, celle du Soyuz que j'ai emprunté la dernière fois, ben, d'avoir une route à l'Ouest pour rejoindre la station, ça c'est important. Euh, ce que ça veut dire aussi, c'est que maintenant, ben, c'est une nouvelle époque, comme vous l'avez dit, de, pour les vols habités, on n'a jamais eu autant de véhicules qu'en ce moment, hein, parce qu'on en a ben, trois ou quatre euh, aux états unis euh, chez nos collègues chinois, euh, chez les Russes, les Indiens ont leur, euh, ont leur programme, il y a beaucoup de nations qui veulent aller dans l'espace, on veut aller plus loin, on veut dépasser l'orbite basse terrestre, 
Euh, donc, bah, moi, je pense que c'est l'âge d'or des vols habités qu'on vit en ce moment. Les gens ne se rendent pas compte. On regarde beaucoup en arrière pour, le, pour les années 60 et les missions vers la Lune. Et dans quelques années, on aura fait quelque chose d'encore plus ambitieux. Euh, dans la position où je me trouve, moi, c'est évidemment super enthousiasmant. Mais j'espère que ça l'est aussi pour tout le monde. Parce que cette aventure, on n'essaie pas de la vivre égoïstement. Mais on essaie vraiment de la partager. Euh, et notamment bah, parce que ce qu'on fait dans l'espace, on, on espère, on pense que ça sert à tous. Euh, donc voilà, moi, je vous engage à, à, à suivre ça. Et en tout cas, on va faire de notre mieux pour le, pour le partager. Thomas, is there, a, is there a short English translation to that? Uh, the sh very short English is, is uh, I'm excited to be here at KSC because I've, I haven't been here before. I've been an astronaut for more than 10 years, uh, so kind of a veteran. And, and yet I'm, I'm, I'm discovering everything here. This is all new to me, the, the place and the people who've made the space shuttle program go. So I'm uh, very honored to, uh, to be in that position. And the rest of the question was about a new era of human spaceflight with private-public partnership. Uh, and I think we're living in the golden age of human spaceflight. There's never been that many ways to go into space. It uh, looks like everybody, every country has a project or a spacecraft that's uh, as capable of flying or will as well for the public because we're doing this for them. We're hoping that what we're achieving in space uh, benefits to everyone. So follow the journey. And hi, I'm Melanie Cowan from the European Space Agency. A question for Toma. After following in the footsteps of Gagarin for your first launch, could you give us your thoughts about looking out the window, seeing your vehicle getting prepared, knowing that you're going to be following in the footsteps of the Apollo astronauts? And if you could say a few words about the work you're doing on board the International Space Station that will enable the next generation of ESA astronauts to go forward to the moon and beyond. That's a, thanks, Melanie. It's good to see you here. Um, that's a lot of footsteps to, to follow in, uh, but we're, we're doing our best. Um, like I said, there's a lot of history here. There was a lot of history in Baikonur. There's a lot of tradition, uh, but we're actually really lucky because now with, with SpaceX, with what SpaceX is doing with NASA and Crew Dragon, we get to come up with our own new traditions, which is pretty awesome. Um, so we're, we're honored. We're really doing our best. Um, and what we'll be doing on board, actually on board the space station, is 232 experiment, I think, for increment 65, which is unbelievable. It feels like every week we're we're just topping the, the record of science that we've done before. Um, there's 40 coming from ESA, uh, 12 run by CNES directly. Um, and I think that's what all this research that we're constantly feeding on the space to the space station is what enables us uh, to keep going as, as a research agency for ESA. So we have all those goals for the mission. There's operational goals, research goals, uh, very packed schedule. We'll try to do our best and then hand over uh, at least the European part to Matthias Mauer, my colleague from Germany at the end of the mission, and then he will himself, if everything goes according to plan, hand it over to uh, Samantha. And uh, we, like Frank said, we, we plan to be a reliable partner uh, for the years to come and for what's coming after ISS, and that's, and that's the Artemis program. So we're trying to lay the foundations for this, um, and it starts from doing a good job on board the ISS. Okay, that's all the time we have for questions. Um, we are going to set up for a, a photo op before the, these folks get out of here, uh, but I do want to uh, 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 let you know the, the mission is obviously you've heard is scheduled for uh, next Thursday morning early, 6.11 and 46 seconds. Don't be late for that launch. Uh, it's an instantaneous launch window, so um, uh, we don't have a lengthy launch window. So. Don't be late for that. I'm going to uh, let us end our program and turn it back over to the acting administrator, Steve Jersey. Hey, thank you. Just a couple of things in closing. Um, first, um, Kate Rubens and her Russian colleagues are returning um, to Earth tonight, undocked tonight and uh, returning um, on their Soyuz. So I wanted to recognize that. Before we launch, we have an undock and landing. Um, also, later today, um, we have an important announcement on relative to the human landing system, HLS. So we'll be um, uh, doing a press teleconference at 4 o'clock today. Um, so hopefully you can join us for that. And then with that, um, glad to see you here. Uh, we, we are ready. I know you're ready. Um, so uh, go, go Dragon, go Falcon 9, go Crew 2. Thank you, everybody.